This is the bear alignment chart, and we're going to start with the coolest and nicest bear in our book, the lawful good, the sloth bear. Its good nature has been immortalized by the Jungle Book. That's right, Baloo is a sloth bear. And like Baloo, sloth bears take a hard stance against harming people, other bears, and even most other mammals, as they have evolved to be mostly insectivorous. They're kind of like the monks of bears. They're very kind to other members of their species and get by on the bare necessities, which include simple dens and food made up primarily of ants, termites, and fruits. This doesn't mean they're defenseless. Adults weigh over 100 kilograms, and they have powerful claws and jaws to defend themselves against tigers, leopards, and the odd ordinary elephant. But in terms of being generally a complete saint, the sloth bears need no defense. They are the definition of lawful good. Moving to the evil side of the chart, we have one of the most powerful terrestrial predators on Earth. In the forests of Western North America, this bear is king, and his will is law. This is the lawful evil, the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are massive, aggressive, and incredibly fast. They have the reach and quickness of a heavyweight champion, if boxers were allowed to attach daggers to their gloves. They use that killing ability to uphold their law. Get close to their kids, you're dead. Try to take some of their salmon, you're dead. Try to befriend them and get to learn their ways, believe it or not, dead, right away. So follow the rules, and you'll be safe from this ruthless hunter and ruler. But what if a cold-hearted king matched with an absolute psychopath and had a bratty little punk? It's a tale as old as time, and it happens in the bear kingdom as well. This is the King Joffrey of bears, the neutral evil Groller Bear. They don't occur too often in nature, but when polar bears and grizzlies make babies, they make golden bears with polar bear-like behavior, although thankfully a bit smaller. But sometimes, their lawful grizzly instinct kicks in, and they'll stay away from trouble. This is what makes them neutral evil. They will do all the harm they want when it serves their purposes, but won't really go out of their way to kill things. As climate changes, and as the polar bear and grizzly ranges overlap more and more, we'll see an increase in the neutral evil bear population. Okay, happy thoughts. Think of cute bears. What's the cutest and weirdest bear of them all? Of course, the old kid with a heart of gold and social anxiety. The chaotic good bear, the panda. Pandas are vegetarian goofballs, awkward around potential sexual partners, and likely to fall off a tree at the mere mention of danger. You never know what they're going to do next, and neither do they. They're chaotic. Their coat is unique among bears because they can't conform to bear beauty standards, but they're still pretty enough to reap the benefits of worldwide admiration. They're the ladybirds of bears. They wouldn't hurt a fly, mostly because they're too clumsy to do it, but also because they have no inclination towards violence. They're good bears. But if you're a piece of bamboo, be on the watch. These goobers eat up to 40 kilograms of bamboo every day. Let's hang with the good bears a bit longer. We don't have to travel too far to find this dapper king, the moon bear, the neutral good bear. These Asian bears look like they're ready to attend a fancy gala at a chic restaurant, but their restaurant is a tree and the menu is all bugs and fruit. Luckily for other species like the Asian brown bear, moon bears are very messy eaters and often spill the beans and other snacks where other bears that can't climb can find them. So they don't eat other mammals, are harmless to humans, feed other bears, live in a treehouse, are messy eaters. If they ever make Asian Lion King, the moon bear should play Pumbaa. And yes, Asian lions are a thing, but this episode is not about them. Big cats do play a role in moon bear lives. Leopards and tigers sometimes attack them, especially when they're younger. But moon bears are no pushovers, and at 200 kilograms, they can do a lot of damage. But as long as you leave them alone and you're okay with eating bugs and fruit, moon bears will feed you. Good bears! Their relatives, the American black bears, have a more measured approach to life. 
They're generally calm and content with eating berries and garbage. But get close to its kids, and it will strike you with mighty vengeance and furious anger. These are the true neutral bears, the American black bears. These bears are found throughout North America, from frosty Alaska to balmy Florida. Their immense success comes from straddling the line and avoiding extremes. They're small enough to need a lot of protein like a brown bear, but they're also strong enough to not have any natural predators. They're chill enough to avoid most confrontations with humans, but also protective enough to protect their kids and ensure their safety. They do some good, like dispersing immense amounts of seeds from berries and fruits, but it's really just a byproduct of their voracious appetite. Black bears also kill a few dozen people per decade. Often, the culprit seems to be a mom trying to feed her cubs. So, this average bear, without extreme behaviors, mid-sized, mid-aggressiveness, they're just mid. But they've ridden this averageness to great success, so you gotta respect them for that. And they're also super cute. Nothing average about that. Their cousins, the sun bears, are a bit too smart to concern themselves with the ethical quandaries of good and evil. They are chaotic neutral. They're the smallest bear, smaller than a St. Bernard, and in many ways more like raccoons than bear-like. They like trees, they eat everything, and they have freaky little hands. And they're very, very smart. Studies have shown that they can mimic facial expressions and solve puzzles as well as a gorilla. This intelligence makes them unwilling to accept any rules or preconceptions about what bears are supposed to be. They're unpredictable and kind of weird, in a good way. Unfortunately for them, this and their family-friendly size have made them attractive pets in some regions of Southeast Asia. The illegal pet trade and deforestation are taking a huge toll on their population, and they're now a threatened species. So please leave sun bears alone. They're far too smart and unique and need to be in their home forests. On the other side of the globe, there's a common wise figure in the mountains. This is the lawful neutral bear of the Andes, the spectacled bear. Seeing a spectacled bear is like running into a monk. They're quiet, solemn, and have an ethereal gravitas to them. They have been revered by dozens of cultures in the high Andes. They have very strong discipline in never attacking humans, even when they're hungry. Most of their diet consists of plants, but when starving, they can kill animals as large as horses and tapirs. And yet, humans are never on the menu. But we're humans, and we're not as benevolent. And bears are sometimes killed by ranchers to preemptively protect their cattle, even though these attacks are rare. Thankfully, education campaigns and a decrease in sport hunting is helping to recover their population in parts of their range. Last but not least, we have the one bear that would kill you in an instant. This is the definition of chaotic evil. This is the polar bear, the destroyer. Beneath its cute, cuddly, adorable... Okay, these bears are disproportionately beautiful for how deadly they are. If given the chance, they will eat you. They'll also kill babies of other males, and generally anything that moves. But their chaotic nature goes beyond them, and you can sometimes see them dumpster diving in northern communities. People living in polar bear country have to be ready to battle with a handsome killer at any given moment. Standing at over three meters tall, able to run at 40 kilometers an hour, and capable of detecting prey from kilometers away, there's not much you can do to stop these giants. And yet, we can't help but love them. Hey, it's fun to root for the wild card. This has been the bear alignment chart. What should we chart next? Please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya! Tell him, Nibs. You tell him. Tell him. We have one of the most powerful terrestrial predators on Earth. Is it you, Nibs?
Oh, you're going to start that, are you? I'm still doing lines, Nebs. Can I do lines? Huh? Oh. I guess not. You going to go fast? Yeah. What if I touch your belly? Oh, makes you go faster. <laughs> this is my life, guys. 